Well, hello, kindred spirits. I have a long video for you today. Today, we are going to be together for two days as I get the house ready for our first annual meet and greet party. We're going to move furniture around. We're going to clean. We're going to prep some food and then some. So I hope you enjoy. So let's rewind and start from the beginning. Oh, hey, caught me while I was putting some dishes away. Have you ever had those dreams that are so realistic that you're exhausted in the morning? Well, I had those dreams last night and the dreams were that we had our neighborhood party gathering, which is tomorrow, Thursday. And I dreamt that everybody showed up and I had nothing done. House wasn't cleaned, food wasn't prepped cocktails and mocktails were not made and one of my neighborhood friends was scurrying around the house setting up for me. I woke up in a little bit of a panic but that said I have decided that I'm going to enjoy this this might be loud I'm going to enjoy this party and I'm going to set the house up nice and slow. I already did a very deep cleaning when Ben had his scotch and guard event so it's mainly picking up some of the piles. I got 68 or so boxes off to the post office yesterday that totaled over 500 pounds. And then I will do a surface cleaning, my vacuuming, dusting. I even decided to move some of my iron stone from the butler's pantry to the dining room. I don't even know how I'm gonna do it yet. So I'm gonna be doing that today. And then I have to work on my grocery list. I've bought almost everything, but then of course I came home and realized I forgot just a few key items. So I'm gonna go out later today and get those. And then tomorrow I'll prep the food. And today I'll probably also start the, the table for the buffet. So I'm gonna just get this emptied load the rest and then I can start moving the iron stone and then I can do a deep clean in the butler's pantry because that one does need it. And then I'll start moving things around, decorating. And we're also getting ready for what I'm calling purging and merging because having to clean out not only my store where I have a large piece of furniture coming for our bedroom. Um, we have some items coming from my in-laws place, so I have to clear some things out. Also, while helping to clean out their place, I realize that I myself, such as my in-laws and many of us out there, hold on to things for so long. I mean, just because. And I need to start purging because I don't want my children to have to clean out things that I'm saving from childhood. And there's some things I can't wait to show you. These things I'm gonna absolutely keep, but then there's things I can get rid of, um, such as I have even all of my cards from when I was born, my mother gave them to me. I don't need those. I don't need a stack of cards that say, congratulations on your baby girl. I'm here, I don't need that. So, um, so things like that I'm gonna start letting go. But that's going to be part of another video, purging and merging. And maybe in this video, I have no idea. As you know, my videos are pretty much fluid and we just go with the flow and see what happens. So I'm going to finish this and then we're going to get going cleaning the house. All right, I'll see you in a minute. I've already removed a few of the items that I'm taking to the dining room, but I thought it would be a nice time to even just do this over for fall. But like I said in the video earlier, I'm going to take away and put some of the more decorative items in the dining room that will be seen more. And then I will be putting back on the shelves the mixing bowls and some of the water bowls and things that I do use in here for mixing and baking and prepping. And then I'll be able to bring some of the things that are down below back up on the shelves. So I'm going to start doing this and just play with it for a little bit and enjoy my morning to some classical music. And for those wondering, I love to listen to Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 4. It's happy, it's upbeat, and it just puts me in a good mood. I 
I really like this one. So that I'll be able to see it more now. I have a lot of almost duplicates. They look so similar, but they're different. But I'm still going to see what I could fit in the dining room. Let's see. Some of you might remember this corner cabinet I waited six months to get because the store I saw it in was a thrift store and it closed during the sea time and the vid time I should say and when the store opened I was there I think the first or second day and grabbed this piece I knew it was meant for our other house and I was so pleased to see that it fit here as well so this is my pine corner piece I just love the rounded back and on the back side it's rounded too almost like a barrel it's really cool so I'm going to set this up with the items that are more for serving. And then the butler's pantry will be more for the baking and other items that just don't fit in here. But this will be serving and the pretties so that I can enjoy them walking by every single morning. And then the butler's pantry, I will enjoy them every morning when I get my coffee and every night when I prep my coffee. All right, so I'm gonna start filling this up and see how it comes out. I'm just going to carry a few things in now and just place them and then I'll move them. But one thing I like to do with bookshelves and shelves is the zigzag technique. And that's really just like it says zigzag, where you put a heavier item on one shelf and then over here and then here, and then you can start filling and it just gives a nice flow to the eye while you're looking at a bookshelf or a piece like this. So these probably won't stay here as such because they are so similar. I might have them on either side, but I'll still have something weightier below. So case in point, if I do this, which I don't know if I'm gonna like, I'll make sure there's something bigger here just so that it still does kind of a zigzag. But once again, I have no idea where I'm going with this. It's going to move so many times. You're gonna see an edited down version for sure. I do have some platters that will go back here, but I think I'm gonna use those on the buffet table. So right now I'm setting this up without, but I do have push pins back here just to hold the platters upright so they don't slide down. I have a long way to go with this. Okay, this is not the finished cabinet, but I thought I would show you the amount of items that I brought in. And I'm gonna save this completed corner hutch for the full fall home tour I'm hoping to do next week. So this is what I have right now. And let's go see what I've done in the butler's pantry for now. The same for in here. Right now, I just brought things in. I did not place them yet. You can see right now, they're pretty much in just a straight line like this. There's nothing for the eye to follow. Oops, it goes in and out there. So what I like to do is kind of create shelves that have a little undulation to them so that your eyes move. So after I finish cleaning the house and knowing I have some extra fun time, I will come back in here, create some levels, add a little fall color, and then this space will be done. And once again, I will share this during the fall tour. Now over here, I'm going to start taking everything off of the table and finding places just for the few accessories I have on there. But I wanted to show you something. Um, first, I have some boxes that have to go out. I got another delivery in that I'm going to be adding to the store. They're the acorn, not acorn, they're the pine cone napkins that I had last year that sold out. But this is kind of a little pride and joy project that I had. But this mirror, this was at one point a very cherished mirror of my in-laws. But I guess one year, I guess it, it might have fallen and all of these pieces, a majority of these pieces broke off in tiny, tiny little pieces. And the way my in-laws are, 
they saved everything. Now they brought them to restoring companies and they said it is not worth restoring it. And I think they did a couple of those and they were heartbroken, but they still kept this item and all the pieces. Well, one day when I was over their house, I found this and I don't even remember where it was tucked away. And I asked them, can I try fixing it? And of course they're like, well, yes, but we've already had experts say it couldn't be done, not worth it. So they're like, well, why not give it a go? I sat in my house and worked on this on and off for a couple months using just like a, um, a compound, like a wood modeling compound. And I rebuilt thing and I can't wait to find the before pictures. And you can see there's some things missing. I'm not an expert at this. I sometimes just jump into things and try them for the first time and that's what I did. So there is some missing piece here of the wing, but I rebuilt all of this. This head was completely broken off. I repaired that. And I know also I redid and I made some of these leaves. So this is one of those projects that I took a lot of pride in. And like I said, I've never done it before. For clients, I have done decorative um, painting. I used to do a lot of marbleizing and stripes and all kinds of stuff. So doing some faux finishes, I was excited to do that. Once they hung it on the wall and from a distance, you couldn't tell and they, they really appreciated it. And like I said, it was just one of those moments that it just made my heart swell seeing the appreciation and the joy they got from seeing this put together again when somebody told them it wasn't worth doing. An expert could have done it for sure, but you know, when you're told a cost and what the mirror was probably valued at, they just said no. So now it's going to hang in our home. I have to find a beautiful spot for it and it will be cherished by us now. I don't even know which family member this came from. I'll have to ask Ben. It's going to be a great, great grandparents, but I just don't know who. making sure to keep my knees bent. And yes, Ben is home. I'm just stubborn. I like to do things on my own sometimes. He just came downstairs and rolled his eyes and he said, you do you. This picture never fit the space properly. So we're gonna do something else over here. This is one of two secretary's desks from Ben's family. The other one is coming home next week and this one is a lighter wood and I think it works better with the clock and other items here. And this was in our bedroom temporarily. I have the very large cabinet coming in from the store. I'll finally have it in the bedroom and I'll have a place to now put linens and other items. So I also had to keep in mind, I wanted something here that had legs because I have a, a vent below, an intake vent. Now, normally, would I put a piece of furniture like this here in the kitchen? Most likely not, but it's gonna be functional. And I can sit here writing Christmas cards, have the fire going if I want. So I think it's gonna work out. If not, we'll move it some other day. But for now, I have to make space for the moving truck to come next week. Maybe I will try a round mirror first, just to see how it looks. But then I'm going to try the eagle mirror here and I do think it will look pretty. I'm actually looking at it on the wall right now trying to visualize. It won't hurt to try and um, I don't mind putting nails in my wall or even like with the mantle. I fill them easily. I can paint them. It, that does not scare me. I would never ever trust the, the 3M hooks. I've had a lot of people reach out. I've had disasters with them. Clients have had disasters with them. This is the way to go when you have 
antiques or items that are special. Remember that. That's my, my tip for the day. All right, I'm gonna... All right, once again, I don't know if the height's gonna be okay. I don't know about the size, the scale, but let's just check it out. You're gonna see it from a distance before I do. Hmm, I think it needs to be lower for sure. Well, I'm kind of liking this. I think I'm gonna hang it here for now. I'm going to make sure that my hook is secure. I'm gonna use a better one and put that up. And this will be, I think, really pretty, at least for going into the fall season, into Christmas, and we'll get to enjoy. Um, these pieces may have been together at one point, but I think it went actually over, I know at one point it was over a half round table. I'm gonna hang this here for now. Just make it a little more secure. We'll accessorize it. And then, like I said, I've got to clean out in here. But then I'll be able to sit here and write Christmas cards, enjoy the fire, look at recipe books. So I'm, I'm really liking this idea. Could probably even leave it open um, for the party and put some things on it, but I'm not sure yet about that. Yay, I like that. All right, so I'm gonna take this down and make it more secure by putting a proper hook on there because this does have a little weight to it and then I can clean up all the other mess that I did. I also like that Ben is going to get to enjoy a lot of his family heirlooms every single day. I plugged in the bulbs that go in the tavern and when I first plugged them in, they were red and now they're green, so they're letting me know that they are all charged, ready to go. And I think I had them plugged in for about an hour, maybe two. I actually didn't even look at the clock, but it, it hasn't been that long. So what I'm going to do is later today, I will turn these on and I'm going to leave them on until they need to be charged again. If they go out in the middle of the night, I will, of course, lose track. But I want to see how long these hold a charge for. So that was pretty easy. I just hung them here and I could have untied them, but I didn't. They're very light. And then over here, I am charging some of the bar lights. I had one in the butler's pantry, some of you may remember. I'm going to try them here in the kitchen cabinets. I've got a little bit of a mess going on here prepping for the party. But I'm going to put them here at the bottom so they shine up and let's see how that looks tonight just with a low cast glow. And almost any time I bring home fruits and vegetables from the grocery store, those little naughty fruit flies show up and I have already caught quite a few. Now there's so many different little techniques. This is my favorite. I've seen others out there where they add Dawn dish detergent and all kinds of stuff. I've even used wine. This is by far the best thing I have ever, ever done to catch fruit flies. And right now it's about 11.30 in the morning. I'm actually going to time this to see if I catch some. Now I do have some other things here in the kitchen they might prefer to have because I'm cutting fruits and vegetables for the party. But I'm going to set this little trap up. And all you need is a little vessel. And let's get this out of the way. I have messy fingernails because I'm not doing them until later after I work around the house. But you get a little vessel here. And all you need is apple cider vinegar that has the mother in it. All right, and just give it a good shake. And this is an amazing trap for fruit flies. And all you're gonna do is just put a little bit in your container and try not to get it around the edge of the container because that's where they'll go first. You want them to go right to the liquid. And then you just take some saran wrap. Oops, I just turned on my dishwasher with my hip there. There we go. And then just gonna put on some saran wrap really tight. All right, however you wanna put it on, but it's just gonna be really tight. And I just kind of twist it and I leave it like that. Oops, here we go. And then I take just a little bit of a, a a pin or a pen and make a tiny hole. That one's kind of big, but still they go in and for some reason they don't know how to get out. So that's all you need to do to catch fruit flies. I'm going to put this on my counter near the fruit. Over here I do have, let me see if I can move this for you. I have some tomatoes that I'm prepping 
and I've been working on some limes and other things. So I'm going to put this over here and just wait. I'm not going to watch because I have other things to do. But like I said, it's about 1130. I'm going to check it in a few hours and see if I have any of those little naughty fruit flies. I mentioned I was going to share the fruit fly trap. I forgot yesterday, but I did look at it one hour after I put it out and I had two. As of this morning, it's probably hard to see. We have four flute, we have four fruit, <laughs> can't even say it, four fruit flies trapped. Dare you to say that 10 times fast. are heading to the garden to get some basil for the caprese salad. I almost forgot to grab it. Just did a, a dump run and it is hot, 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 hot. Uh, we're in the mid 90s here. I put out the corn cornhole game out here, but I'm telling you, it's so warm. I don't know if anybody's gonna be out here. I'm just gonna pick some leaves here with my fingers and then I will julienne and then just a little chopping of it. Got to rinse this off. But, well, at least we had some nice weather here, but I do have a feeling that as soon as this hot weather goes away, you're, you like being close, Willow? Um, she loves smelling plants. It's the cutest thing, too. Um, I have a feeling that once this heat wave passes, we've had it for almost five days now, that all of a sudden it's going to turn into fall and that'll be it. I'm going to try to dig up my rosemary this year and bring it on the porch. I'm not sure how that will work out. But um, let's see, is that enough? Maybe a couple more leaves. Wouldn't hurt to have a couple. I'm just going to rinse them off. Let's see. I think it's an hour and a half away, so I think I will cut the tomatoes right now for the caprese salad and make my cocktail. I don't even know what it's gonna be yet. Talk about last minute. And I really even haven't, I've set up the table to the point where if somebody came early, I'd be ready, but I don't think that anybody's going to come that early except for maybe a couple of the ladies who are bringing some things. But I'm going to get set up and start the salad. I just have to wash off my basil. Well, I think going to the dump and then to the store, I did a little bit later in the day. And, oh, I need a paper towel. Just a minute. So what I was saying is it's 4.10 and the party starts at 5. I haven't made the salad yet. I have to put together my cheese platter and the cocktail. So that's what I'm going to do. Kind of work better under pressure and I'm not going to let it be bad pressure, but uh, I'm starting to kind of be like the dream. Wait a minute, am I going to be ready when they show up? Yes, yes I will. Okay, so I'm going to get a few things prepped here just in case people come early, like get rid of my nail polish. One thing I like to do is get rid of the plastic containers before guests arrive. Nobody needs to see that. So I have a lot of children coming, a lot, it can be anywhere from six to eight. So I made sure I had some child friendly things to snack on. I'm making chicken nuggets. We have the pretzels here, even though Ben and I have already been going in the pretzels ourselves. And of course we have crackers and cheese. I don't know what other people are bringing. So that will be fun to see. So I'm just gonna put this on the table. Stick those in the middle, hide those. And let's see. I think I'll put this in the pantry just in case I need the container. Mm -mm. 
<laughs> Where? I don't know. Okay. And I did buy some small sugar cookies. What I tried to do with all of this, everything's going to be small. Because when you're talking and chatting, you don't want to be having a lot of food in your hands and a lot of food in your mouth. So um, even the caprese salad, I plan on making those smaller. I got small tomatoes. And I picked up some pre-sliced mozzarella. But I'm just placing these on here. I cleaned off this tray. I was going to do the wax paper on the bottom or the parchment paper. Don't have time. But I know these are clean. I don't know what, like I said, other people are bringing. Some are going to be bringing desserts. Some will be bringing a food app. I wanted to have just a little bit of both. I have some items for vegetarians. I thought I grabbed gluten-free crackers. Grabbed the wrong box by accident. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, so I have the cookies made up. I'm just gonna put these on the table. How fast was that, right? Earlier, I pre-sliced some vegetables for a little crudité. I also got some herbed cheese that I want to soften up a bit, oh, and broccoli for the crudité station. Once again, little tiny bites. I was waiting to put out the crackers and the cheese. Um, I wanted it sooner so that things didn't get stale in this hot, humid weather. Recycling. Now I'm rushing. I can't believe that I'm rushing now. But everything else is done. I'm just going to put these in the middle. I knew I'd be strapped for time, so I'm going all easy. I've said this before, no shame. No shame. It's not like I'm going to go out and make my own cheese, right? No. If I could just open it. Actually, to put a dish in the middle of Okay, I'm going to put the softer herb cheese in here. I'm keeping all the ironstone together. And then I'm just going to put some of this cheese around the edge. I always try to have more food and more beverages than needed. It just, it's peace of mind for me. And if there's leftovers, I ask people to take them things home or we'll snack on it later. Once again, this is from five to seven. I can't even remember why we decided to do it on a work night at five o'clock, but we did. And I'm thinking I'm seeing the camera's a little crooked, but that's okay. <laughs> We're okay. Um, so I don't know um, why we did it, but that's why I wanted to also have plenty of food here for those who get, are hungry. So I think I'm going to preheat the oven in a minute. And here's my ADD. I'm going to do it now while I'm still doing it. I washed the grapes off earlier and have them in here in some paper towel to do some drying. There's still a little moisture here. I'm just gonna plop some on the side. Yeah, let's see. I'm gonna put some dried apricots on here. Usually I like, I'm going to make myself a large board with sides because I love making larger platters and knowing that we host quite a few, I think it's time that I do that. In color. And I, I want to put some nuts here, but I'm always concerned with nut allergies, but nobody told me they have a nut allergy, so I'm going to put just a few here on the side. 
And if somebody needs something that hasn't been with nuts, I have another batch here. Okay. Once again, I think I'll just put one out. Okay, so this I'm going to put on the table. I'm going to put this back in the fridge. I think I'll put the other grapes out elsewhere. One of my friends might be here. Oh, it's Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you. She didn't. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I'm running behind, but I think I'm going to do it. I think I'll make it. I don't know, guys. This is like down to the wire. Right now I'm doing some um, ranch dip. And on here I have some peppers of orange and red and small pieces of broccoli. And I also did some cucumbers cut to look like maple leaves, but I might just scatter them on here. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have plenty of this left over. And each time I do something, I'm rinsing and putting it in the dishwasher just so I have less mess. As I know for a fact, once guests show up with all their trays, we're gonna have a mess anyway, but I want to have at least mine a little bit less. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let's see. I have a couple whole cucumbers here just so that people know that these are cucumbers shaped like here. Let me show you like maple leaves. Now, I tried to find seedless cucumbers, which are never always just completely seedless, but they are enough. So I'm just gonna tuck the leaves around the edge here and there for fun. And then I'll put some little tongs or a little fork. Kind of just put them all around there like they're falling. <laughs> All right, so that's that. I'm going to get out my cutting board. So yeah, I guess I will use this one. Okay. Oops, I missed a sticker. I washed all these earlier and I thought I got all the stickers. They have large and small mozzarella packs that are pre-sliced. Once again, no shame, it's gonna help me. I'm just gonna get some of this out of the way in case somebody comes in. Oh, I got my computer on the counter too. And my water bottle and my rags, oh my goodness. Okay, did a little quick clean up here in the kitchen, just in case, because now it is 4.36, okay. Trying to take two of these a day too, 64 ounces. Hmm. All right, so what I did is I tried to find smaller tomatoes, but not smaller than the mozzarella. So what do we got here? I'm gonna slice these up, try to make them all the same size. I like using my serrated knife here. And I'll put my, my casings here. Get my basil. I to, tried not to bruise it. I was very gentle with it. Basil can bruise really easily and turn black before you even get to use it. Don't want them too thin, but also not too thick. Sometimes I have to tell myself not to hurry because when I do hurry, things go horribly wrong or I have to do it again. I'm just afraid Willow's going to bark again and I'm going to jump a mile again. Let's see. Okay, chicken nugget thing's ready. But I need to get a few of these plated. So I'm going to start with tomato, mozzarella. Tomato, 
mozzarella. I have some balsamic glaze. I love using a glaze on these. Willow's making some noise. One of my neighbors might be walking over. So my neighbor just brought over two huge buckets full of drinks that we put here on the counter because really we all think it's gonna be way too hot to be outside. Um, we thought we were gonna have the fireplace going tonight. <laughs> no go, no such luck. So once again, I'm just putting these smaller pieces out here with the mozzarella. I'm gonna have some extra, but I don't wanna overload this. Maybe I'm gonna do it again here. So I have my washed leaves here. I'm just going to stack them up. Oh, this smells so good. These are tiny leaves. And I'm just going to, let me see, I got extra wetness here. I'm going to just take off these little stems. I'm gonna roll them up. I think I'll do it lengthwise here, just so I can do some little Julian pieces. Now these will make long Julian strips. I'm going to go, just try to grab them again, the opposite direction, just so I have little pieces. All right, I have some balsamic glaze, balsamic vinegar glaze. I love using this. And I'm just going to willy-nilly make sure everyone has a little bit. And then sprinkling on my basil. few more leaves. I think I'll cut those up. Ben is helping me right now in the tavern putting ice in a big bucket for the white wine. I heard him pop the red wines. And once again, I don't know if those are going to be drank or if any, you know, everybody, what anybody will want, but I once again rather be prepared. Okay. I like it. I have my, my friend here is going to help with the chicken nuggets, my neighbor, and let's see, now I can make the cocktail. Okay, this is a drink that we're just winging it here. I have two limes, freshly squeezed. I did two cups of vodka. I did two cups of the blood orange liqueur, and then I have two containers of the cran mango, which is 64 fluid ounces each, and then a white cran strawberry. So I'm going to give this a little try. Oh, yum. I don't taste the vodka. That could be dangerous. Hmm. And I'm going to put some lime slices in here, I think, too. All right, I'm just going to show you this little setup here. So I'm realizing that we're gonna need a lot more lighting in this room at one point. But I'm setting up here if anybody wants to make some old fashions. I have some cherries, some sugar cubes. I'm gonna get a little bit of water just so that if somebody wants to mix it. We have the ice balls here. I need my tongs and the scoop is there, good. And Ben set us up with the wine bucket here and he opened her red. So that's done. I have some wine glasses there. Once again, I have way more glasses out than people, but some people might want to have a certain type of glass for their drinks and some might want the plastic cups I have in the other room. So we have, this is set up again, like I did at the Scotch and Gar, and our light's not working in here, unfortunately, but there's mixes here if people want to go in. We're just going to say, help yourself.
It's just about 9.30. Ben just loaded the dishwasher and I'm going to start cleaning off the counters. The night, I have to say, was so enjoyable and it was so fun seeing people talk that didn't know each other. Everybody thought the other person knew somebody else where we really didn't know each other and now we have a group of 20 more friends in our neighborhood and it was just a wonderful success. The children seemed to have fun. Willow thoroughly enjoyed having the company and I will absolutely love to host this again. But right now I'm going to clean up. I'm going to put some bags together for when the ladies pick up their dishes tomorrow. Hopefully they'll take some additional vegetables home if they'd like and it's, I'm just, I'm, I'm tired, but I'm not going to sleep. I look forward to cleaning this up and waking up and having just a really good memory of an event that I hope will be a tradition for year after year. Well, it's the next morning and lights are still going strong. Can't say I am, <laughs> I have my morning voice. I woke about six o'clock and the sky was amazing. Beautiful reds and yellows. I just couldn't get myself out of bed. There was just no way. Um, that was a long day for me yesterday. So I'm up, I'm going to grab my coffee. And I think today I'm going to sit and edit a video. Oh, I shut the door because I put some of the trash in here. I didn't want Willow to get in it. But I cleaned up yesterday, or last night I stayed up because I wanted to wake to a clean kitchen. That was my goal. So I still have the, the buckets my neighbor's going to pick up. I didn't dump the cocktail yet. Just a very little bit to, to clean up. But I'm so glad I did because it's nice walking out to see this. But I'm gonna grab my coffee. Oh, and I need a cup. Yes, my brain's not working yet. Actually, I'm supposed to be drinking my water first. It's my goal. All right, I'm gonna break my goal. <laughs> I'm gonna break the plan. We need coffee. Today, luckily, it's supposed to only be in the low 70s, 60s and 70s. So we finally broke that heat. Another thing I did last night was I washed all of the guests' dishes, all the neighbors that they, you know, the things that they brought, and I have them here on the porch for when they would like to come and retrieve them. So, yeah, I got a lot done last night. I'm glad I did because today I am just going to do nothing. I'm going to fill a few orders and edit a video and relax because I have another busy few days ahead of me. But this is, this is going to be a treat. Just sit here in my rocking chair and relax for a little bit. I can't relax. I have to move a topiary tree. Just a moment. My shoes first. I'm thinking it was probably a little too close with people coming and going last night. I noticed that myself when I came in with some groceries. I put these back last night. I think I'll probably put pumpkins on those soon. Okay, now I can relax. I noticed something really important while I'm sitting here. The diamond pattern on the topiary holders matches the diamond pattern on our antique wicker chairs. It's kind of cool. And I'm thinking I'd more coffee if that's the thing I'm thinking about right now. It is kind of cool. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed that getting ready for a neighborhood meet and greet party. And I will see you again soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.